Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to discuss a front horn bass reflex cabinet uh, design that I've been working on for quite a while. And um, it's gonna be a little bit tricky doing this video because I record all the way through and I don't edit my videos. And so it's gonna be tricky to stay on course and to develop a coherent thought. And so I'm going to just follow um, the original blog post um, and just kind of use that so that I don't get off track too much and so uh, why would we want to use a large cabinet like this so um, using the base reflex uh, you can see here it has the reflex ports the idea here on why to use this versus just a traditional mid bass horn is that it eliminates obviously the the need for a separate bass cabinet and so a, a complete system that reproduces bass mid bass across the entire spectrum that's the design that's the idea here um, and so the other thing is uh, with the shallow front horn is that it physically time aligns the woofer to the compression driver and so that's always difficult to achieve it is very important that that is done um, and so we want to try to maintain using a passive crossover in this design and not be forced to use uh, a DSP solution that we're there that you know in order to get the delays uh, from the misalignment of the drivers so um, the third thing is that it provides pattern control so the large area mouth area of the horn here is going to provide pattern control down into the 250 Hertz region okay um, if the design is optimized correctly, uh, then the entire system can sum to a flat frequency response. Uh, the shallow front horn provides a moderate sensitivity gain of 6 dB uh, from around 100 Hz and up. So this contrasts with the fully dedicated front horn, which targets plus 9 dB sensitivity gain. And so uh, that's typical of a, of a traditional horn. And so what we're doing is we're making a compromise between a traditional horn and going with a more shallow, more of a waveguide type uh, uh, device on the front of the woofer. And so below 100 hertz, uh, there is a shallow falling response that helps some with the port output. Okay, so again, a fully dedicated uh, horn or a traditional horn would fall off sharply below the cutoff. And so the design goal is to achieve a flat uh, frequency response without requiring corner placement and so um, the design can be simulated in horn horn rasp using an exponential front horn um, and so in this design I'm using a 6400 square centimeter horn mouth surface area and then a horn depth of 30 centimeters or 12 inches and so the throat area of 530 square centimeters is just slightly less than the SD of the 15 inch woofer that we're using. So in this simulation, it's a uh, acoustic elegance TD 15 M. Um, but for the actual build, which we're, we're, which we're, we're doing this month, we're using a pair of, uh, sorry, a single uh, TAD TL 1601B 15 inch woofer um, for for the build for this month so we are actually going to build uh, this um, project and we'll actually have uh, test data likely in February uh, to confirm performance and so um, now with these parameters um, we have the following output from the driver itself so you can see here that it uh, kind of peaks at around 120 hertz and then it has a, a gentle falling response like I mentioned earlier. If this was a traditional horn um, with a much deeper uh, horn length then you would see a much steeper cutoff uh, below the below the cutoff uh, of the horn. And so if we overlay the, the uh, reflex output uh, you can see here this is the poor output and then I've, I've uh, overlaid in the light gray the output of the driver front horn so you can see there the overlay between the two outputs if we sum those together um, we actually get this resulting response and so um, this result is using a one pi space uh, setting in horn rasp which means that there's a rear 
uh, wall that's helping with boundary reinforcement to bring up those uh, base frequencies. And then the internal volume uh, for the reflex alignment is 137 liters. Um, so if the cabinet was actually placed into the corner of, of the room, I believe that's uh, quarter pie placement, um, the output in the base jumps by 5 dB. Um, so I guess what we're saying here is that we don't necessarily need corner placement um, like some of the historical designs. Uh, so this is great for, uh, um, obviously it's great that you don't have to use corner placement. So you can have your speakers set up uh, for proper imaging as a stereo pair. So um, there's quite a lot of history past examples of this type of a design configuration. So uh, I'm going to list off four different designs that exist um, and talk about their overall uh, dimensions and, and performance. And so starting with the Altec 817A, you can see it here. Um, it measures 95 centimeters wide and it uses two Altec 515HG woofers. And you can see that uh, there's some data available on this cabinet. Now, Alltech publishes the data. You can see the frequency response here uh, in an anechoic condition. And you can see that the, the kind of the shallow horn there provides gain down to about 125 hertz. And then you can see they actually do show the impedance, the cabinet tuning at around 50 hertz. And then you can see um, the response kind of plateaus um, like you like it normally would with a, a regular reflex cabinet okay so that just gives some context and um, some comparison now I decided to model uh, this in horn rasp using anechoic conditions um, and you can see actually I didn't model this 817A I took my uh, simulation that I had done earlier and and looked at what the results look like anechoic so we have no boundary reinforcement bringing up the base um, and so you can see here uh, that my results actually closely follow uh, what's being published by Alltech um, so you can see here that the horn provides gain and then you're into the, the reflex portion of the of the design um, so the like I mentioned the Alltech has a tuning frequency of 52 Hertz and my design is tuned to 40 hertz. So um, now another uh, design is the JBL 4550A base cabinet. And so it's quite large. It's 50% wider than the Alltech that I mentioned and 28% deeper. And so it's, it's a beast. So you can do some Google image searches on this cabinet and you can see uh, just in fact how uh, large it is there so um, there is published data on this as well and you can see here that because of the larger size uh, that front horn is getting uh, gain down to around 100 Hertz and so um, they're also um, you can see the plateau there as well another interesting design that I don't think is very well known is the ex TAD exclusive 2301 Okay, so it's it's using a reflex front horn as well. Um, you can see the reflex ports are positioned above and below the base cabinet, and in, so the specific model of base cabinet is the EW302. Okay, and so it's quite small at only 63 uh, centimeters wide, um, and TAD claims base extension down to 50 hertz and a sensitivity of 97 dB. And so we unfortunately don't have published uh, frequency response on this, but it would have been uh, really interesting to see uh, how that actually performs. So the fourth uh, design is the GIP laboratory. If you don't know, um, GIP is a builder in Japan. I don't know uh, them personally. Um, I just, uh, you know, they have lots of eye candy online and they do some incredible work. They uh, have a, a cabinet here, the 9700 system, which uses the 9320 uh, cabinet. It's 124 uh, centimeters wide, so quite large. It's larger than the Alltech 817A, but not quite as large as the JBL that we saw there. Um, their system is interesting in that uh, they're using 
really quite large uh, reflex ports, but more interestingly, they use a drape system uh, on the back. So um, this is an interesting paradigm shift. It essentially makes a cabinet quasi open baffle. Um, and it's possible that this could take advantage of the benefits of open baffle and in, in that you have reduced output at the sides of the cabinet, which is going to uh, minimize harmful room modes in the base frequencies. Um, converting the, uh, actually I don't, converting their, their website, uh, they describe the louvers um, as a, a tool basically to adjust the base output specific to the room uh, conditions, which they call uh, self-favorite. Um, coming up uh, with the design, um, we, you know, it's one thing to, to do a simulation and it's another thing to come up with a workable design. And so uh, taking the horn rest uh, conditions, I was able to uh, design a, a cabinet that looks like this. Um, and so this, there's two cabinet designs that I've come up with. One is this design, which uh, is um, using straight sections of plywood. And so I've, uh, this would be uh, the early prototype prototype design, uh, which we'll be building a pair of these this month using the TAD 1601B woofers um, that actually will be going to a customer. They um, saw this blog post that I had done and um, decided that they were uh, willing to accept the risk um, and trust my simulations. And, uh, and so this will allow me to get test data on this build to see how it performs and and then they're going to get shipped off to uh, the customer in the US so thank you John uh, for that and so John was kind enough to send me a uh, new inbox uh, TAD TL 1601B woofers so um, I'm, I'm really excited about this uh, to be able to have the opportunity to build uh, a cabinet like this um, to fully realize um, something that's potentially world-class and uh, in terms of sound quality so um, so this is just the the renders of the prototype here now I positioned the reef the ports top and bottom and the reason for that was just so that we didn't have the ports interrupting uh, the horn flare geometry which may cause some some disturbances in the output of the horn so um, you can see the guitar there just shown for scale um, and then uh, perched on top is the ES290 by radial with the uh, super tweeter there so um, now the louver system is very interesting so we are going to uh, test that out I just have a simple louver on the back um, to see how that uh, plays out with interactions with the room you can see here um, in order to get the internal volume down to 137 liters um, I've had to uh, make the cabinet a trapezoidal shape and so um, you can see there the woofer mounted inside and, and then um, there's another view here uh, showing how the slot ports are arranged in the cabinet so the the front horn at least for the the prototype pair is the construction method would be similar to the sabrin horn uh, where we're taking plywood to uh, to create the horn flare I may add an extra transition uh, there to make it uh, smoother just because I don't want um, this this edge to kind of uh, harm my overall test results so from this design um, pending success um, it's it can be done in a fully CNC machined version and so um, horns of this size are not uh, unfamiliar to me. Um, I've done the 1548 horn, you can see it here, which is a full hardwood CNC machined uh, horn. You can see it there in my workshop. So um, the idea here is to take the same kind of pedal uh, architecture and uh, use it uh, in this design. And so the, the front section would be comprised of four pedals and then the, the back of the horn would also be like another section that's bolted together. And so um, this is uh, this this model here doesn't show the louvers, but uh, it would have the, the louvers integrated into the design. So just a bit of eye candy renders there. Um, trying to make it aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know, that's pretty important, obviously. Um, so 
So there you have it. So that's cabinet uh, 1798 uh, for reference. If you want to, if you're interested uh, or if have any feedback or input on this design, there's my email there. Um, so it's it's a bit of a collaboration, um, looking for uh, feedback and input on uh, if anybody has any experience on cabinets like these. I think the TAD is going to be a good choice. Um, feedback that I've received is that the driver has excellent uh, mid-range clarity even, um, so it'll be great uh, up to the 800 hertz. Um, so the idea is to blend it in uh, with the ES290 with the so that it'd be like kind of like a, a shallow sloped crossover blending in uh, with the ES290 so that we're not taking the uh, the ES290 down to um, the 300 hertz cutoff of the horn um, it's more of like a blended uh, response so that uh, you're not stressing the compression driver too much so you're kind of sharing the load across the uh, the crossover point so that's the the idea there um, which also lowers distortion so uh, that's it um, I'll, I'll be publishing more data as we build the uh, prototype pair of cabinets and uh, showing test results so take care and have a great day